Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to share with you how we renovated our city apartment kitchen. It's quite small and we made everything by ourselves. I always have fun watching this kind of videos when people make over their spaces. So I hope you have fun watching our makeover. So let's get started. Here is the before of our kitchen. It's pretty small and pretty old. I repainted it about eight years ago, but it is now looking really bad. And so we are going to buy new cabinets here. So first we are disassembling all the old cabinets. They are in really bad shape, so we're not going to keep them. and removing any screws and holders from the walls. After that we're giving the kitchen a good clean. My husband used a high pressure washer for that. Also, the walls were chipping off in some places, they were damaged by water a couple of years ago when our neighbors from above had an accident with their water system and so we needed to fix this as well. I've scratched off all that was coming off and then I'm filling the gaps with plaster. We've decided to buy new kitchen cabinets from IKEA. We loved this dark grey kitchen. It's very modern and minimalistic. It has no handles, which I love. And we really loved how it looked with wooden countertops. Here is a kind of mood board of what we're going to make. I've tried different shades to match the cabinets and we ended up with a lighter grey color for the walls. I'll also paint some parts of the kitchen as well, so I've chosen a dark grey color the same as our cabinets and we're going to add a lot of wood and a little aluminum as well. So first I'm making a sketch of our kitchen. Here in Russia IKEA has an online project maker which is really convenient. You can put there your kitchen dimensions and add any cabinet you like to see how it looks. I don't know if they have it in other countries but probably they do. We live in an old house, it's from Soviet times and has quite high ceilings. So we decided to make the most of the space and add a second row of hanging cabinets for extra storage. It's never too much you know, especially for such a tiny kitchen we have. This second row of cabinets will be in white to lighten them a bit and so they are not too overwhelming. So first we're going to paint the ceiling and the walls. I'm using a paint spray for that. It's really convenient if you paint by yourself. It's so much quicker than using brushes or rollers. Though you must be sure you cover everything well before you begin because paint gets everywhere. But it's really quick. I gave it two coats and now it looks so much better than before. Then to the floors. We wanted to change the floors very much since we didn't like this old tile, but removing it would be too hard, so we decided to cover it with floor planks. I'm not sure how they are called in English. They are made of waterproof material, a mixture of quartz and vinyl. Some of such planks are stick and peel, but ours look just like ordinary laminated floors. But they are waterproof, which is great for a kitchen. These floors are quite easy to assemble. You can cut them with a box knife and then just break a plank along this pre-cut line and all the planks fit into each other so you assemble the whole row like that and then insert the fixture of the planks into the gap of the previous row and fix it with a clack. This is really quick. My husband has never done this before and finished the floors in an evening. They are also rental friendly because you can disassemble the floor just as quickly. 
As for the moldings, we didn't want to put any molding trim here, so I've used cork filler to fill the gaps between the flooring and the walls. This is kind of small particles of cork in an adhesive, and I cannot say I'm happy with it. It was okay when just finished, but it gets dirty with time and you cannot clean it up well, so don't do that. <laughs> Next, before we begin assembling the cabinets, I'm going to paint a couple of cabinet sides that will be visible. IKEA has white cabinets and offers panels to cover the sides if they'll be visible, but they are quite costly, they would cost about $140 for us, so I've decided I'll just paint these sides. I'm applying a bonding primer for the paint to hold well, and then giving the sides two coats of dark grey paint I've chosen to fit the cabinet doors. After they are dry, I'm sealing them with a couple of coats of Periton polyacrylic sealer. Here is how they end up looking, the shade fits the color of the doors perfectly, the surface is a bit more shiny, but all in all I'm happy with the result, especially after saving more than $100 for that. After that, my husband, by the way, his name is Harry, is attaching holders for hanging cabinets and will begin assembling the cabinets. This took quite a while, especially with the cabinet over the stoves, because we needed to attach a kitchen hood to it and also make cuts for a ventilation duct and because of gas pipes going there, we had to assemble this cabinet right on the wall. And then when we finished, we remembered that we forgot to make holes for door hinges. Well, this wasn't quite an easy job to do, but it's fun recalling this now. To hide the outlets, which you need quite a lot in a kitchen, Harry is making a cut in the side of one of the cabinets and is putting an outlet extender inside the cabinet and is attaching it under the shelf. So now you can reach the outlets from the inside and they are not visible. Then we are installing kitchen appliances, a microwave oven, and a dishwashing machine, which I am quite happy about because we didn't have space for any before that. We had quite an old and ugly backsplash made out of white tile. It was all crooked, but removing it would have been too hard, so we've decided to put self-adhesive tiles over it. We found aluminum stick and peel tiles at our local hardware store, which really loved, and we are covering all the backsplash with these tiles. They hold really well, so you won't be afraid of them falling off, and they are also rental friendly, because you still can remove them if necessary. And I love how they look, so sleek and modern, and because it's aluminum, they wash easily as well. So, the next thing to do is a countertop. Here we've decided to save a little and to make it ourselves. We've bought an oak board of the required size and Harry is cutting it into three parts to fit our kitchen cabinets. Then Harry is rounding the edges with a router.
and also he's making cuts for a couple of things. A waste basket rotating lid, this one is from AliExpress. And for one more outlet extender, which you can pull out when you need it and put away after use. And the biggest cut is for a sink, of course. Look how clever he uses leg and blocks for making a straight hole in a wood. Although I'm afraid my son will not be so happy about his leg being taken from him. Then Harry is given the countertop a good sanding. And next I'll continue working with it. I'm using oil for the countertops, this is Rubio Monocoat. I'm mixing two components as per the instructions and then I'm applying just one coat of oil, this is why it is called Monocoat, using a pad. Here I've got mahogany, it is looking very red here, but after the oil is applied, you need to leave it for about 15 minutes and then wipe the excess and after that the color is much better, more like a cognac shade, I like it very much. And after the oil has fully set, this takes several days, Harry is installing it into place. First he's gluing the sink into the countertop, And then he's installing the made part of the countertop and securing it with screws. And he has added an aluminum trim where the countertop is attached to the wall. All in all, making the countertop ourselves wasn't so hard since we had all the tools for that. This is a jigsaw, a router and a sander. And this saved us quite a lot of money compared with the ready-made wooden countertops. They costed, I think, three times slower than the ready-made ones. Then Harry is installing the kitchen faucet. And the lighting. First goes the backsplash lighting. Here we've decided to use LED tape. It is quite easy to install as they sell ready-made sets for that. The second line of LED tape goes over the upper cabinets to highlight the ceiling. Although it's far from being perfect and the lighting kind of accentuates that, but we don't look up as often and the light itself is very pleasing. We wanted to add more warmth as there's a lot of grey in the kitchen and also to decorate the wall where the dining table would be, so we've decided to make a slat wall or better say a slat panel there. We bought lumber planks, Harry is cutting them to get the length we need and is making grooves in the slats to attach cross parts which will hold the entire structure together. I watched tons of videos on YouTube about making slat walls and mostly people just glue slats to a wall on mounting glue but we've decided this is not very sturdy and also our walls are not so even so our panel is going to be solid and we'll screw it to the wall. Harry has cut three pieces of plywood for making these cross parts to keep them as thin as possible. After that a good sanding is required and next it's my turn again. I'm staining the slats. Here I'm using Veritone oil stain in early American hue. I've chosen the color which is closest to the countertop oil color, as it would be too costly to paint the slats with the countertop oil. 
As for the cross parts, I'm painting them the same color I've used for the walls. After that, Harry is assembling everything. He is putting the slats face down and is placing the cross parts into the grooves he has made and is screwing these together. The slats need to be placed having a distance between them. Harry is inserting plank pieces there to keep this distance the same for all of the slats. Then we're trying if the ready-made panel is fitting well and Harry is making the card for the outlets. And he's screwing the panel to the wall. Next we'll make the dining table. Yeah, we'll DIY it as well. First Harry is rounding the edges of a board using the router and is sanding the board well. Oh, I forgot to tell you, this board is out of ash tree and we've bought it together with the oak board for the counters in the same woodworking store. And I'm sealing it with the Rubio countertop oil which I've already used for the countertops. After the oil has set, Harry is attaching the legs. We bought them at a local hardware store and we are done. Beautiful wooden table and the Essen sled panel behind it. I've bought vintage chairs for the kitchen, they are Italian from the 80s I think, I found similar ones on eBay later. And I was lucky to get them from a garage sale after some restaurant has closed at a really good price. Their bags are wooden ones and they were chipped from time and also the color didn't go with the rest of the wood. So I'm removing the varnish using paint stripper and then I'm staining them with periton stain. I think they are so lovely, it's a pity we have the space for just two of them and use stools for the rest seating. And to finish our dining area we need a lighting beer as well. Here we've bought a ceiling light and we are touching it to the wall using shelf brackets to position the lights. And also Harry is changing the wires to the vintage ones in fabric cover. And we're installing Edison lamps there for a very special and cozy lighting. And at the very special moment, the last thing to do is to remove safety film from the kitchen doors. I really love how our kitchen looks now after the renovation. We did this about a year ago and both the countertops and the backsplash hold great, no stains or anything. I really love that the counters can be restored easily if anything happens to them, stains or scratches. We'll just have to resand that part and treat it with the oil again. The oil makes no visible borders when applying like this, which is great. I've tried this to remove the stain I did by chance when cleaning the stove with a fat removing cleaning solution and it worked like a charm so I highly recommend this oil Rubio Monocoat if you find it in the US it's a Belgian one as you can see our kitchen is really tiny and we also have the dining table here which is not common for the US I think but here in Russia this is quite normal and we have here everything that is needed except for maybe a coffee station for now but we'll fix this soon I think and I love this so much lighting now we can switch on all of the lights when cooking or leave just the table lamp or the contest lighting when sitting there in the evening with a glass of water it feels so cozy. <laughs> So 
So here is how we did it and I think our kitchen is really freshened up a lot after this renovation. It took about a month for us to finish everything. I really like that it resulted quite budget-friendly renovation because we did everything by ourselves and we tried to save on everything we could as I showed to you. I hope you had fun watching this. Thanks for watching the video and hope to see you in the next one. Bye!